There's a spider hanging off my keyboard. Typical YouTube video of Josh. What's up YouTube? It's Josh Palaw, the RuneScape Felon, here with a tutorial video today for something that I hope you never need to know how to do. How to turn a guitar string into a tattoo needle. As many of you may know, getting a tattoo in jail or prison is kind of a rite of passage, and today I will not be going over how to make a staple into a tattoo needle, which is how I got mine done as pick and poke or stick and poke. This will be how they actually make the needles that they put into tattoo machines, which are supposed to be quite symmetrical at the tip. Um, and I was responsible for retrieving because I was responsible for a period of time for repairing the guitars that you could check out on the rec yard. They were beat up crappy $50 acoustic guitars, but they would trust me with the strings. And in order to prevent people from breaking the guitars on the rec yard and stealing the strings from them, it was more healthy for the prison for me to smuggle a certain number of the guitar strings out for them to use. Uh, it typically was not my responsibility to turn them into needles. I would typically just sell them the strings and that was their job. But um, I did learn how to do it passively in the meantime, and although I'm missing a few things, ironically, I had more things in prison to make a tattoo needle with than I do sitting around today. Uh, I will go into a little bit of detail about the process for it. Uh, one thing that you do need to have that I don't happen to have laying around is sandpaper. And I'll also point out that if you get caught with sandpaper in prison, you automatically get a maximum severity punishment uh, because they consider that to be a shank, basically, because they naturally assume you're going to use the sandpaper to sharpen a shank. But in this particular case, it will be used to sharpen a tattoo needle, and I will address that a little bit after I show you how we actually get the string out of a guitar string. Now this right here is the G string of a guitar. Yes, I know, ha ha, G string, but it's not like that. It's because this is typically tuned to a G note when you're playing guitar. Uh, this is already fully loaded and ready to go. This is simple as this. You use, instead of pliers that I conveniently have out here, you simply use fingernail clippers in there. Ta-da, this is a perfectly good length of several tattoo needles already ready to go. The G-string needs no work done to it. It can be clipped into individual lengths, um, at which point somebody will take a section of it, like so. And this is probably a little bit more than they would really take. And of course, my pliers want to go on the fritz. That's probably, nah, that's about the right length. You'll take this, probably very visible in my low light, just a little guitar string, and they will take a pencil, stick this directly into the center of the eraser, of the pencil, so that it's sticking out like this, and they will then turn the pencil over a sheet of sandpaper so that each side of the needle is equally pointed, coming to a perfect volcano for the right symmetry uh, for the ink to get under your skin. Now that's all well and good whenever you have a G-string, but unfortunately for guys like me, part of my job was to extract the actual string from the inside of a guitar string, and that's where things get a little bit tricky because those of you who play guitar might know, uh, the D-string is wound, and this is the other guitar string that is actually you know, usable for these. These are old, they're a little bit rusted. I just changed strings on my Les Paul the other day, and. Uh, Thought I'd do this one. So this is the D string, uh, the third from the being the lowest string on the guitar. And uh, you will notice that they are wound and I'm just gonna assume that we're not going to possibly be able to get any real level of detail on the windings of a guitar string, but it's very similar to a G string, but with uh, extra string wound around it in order to make it have a louder or more punchy sound. And that is what you take your clippers and start picking away at the very last rung of it uh, I personally have a little bit of overhang here where it's missing a little bit of string and that is not ideal for what we're doing. So I'll be back in just a second after I basically sit here and almost like you're stripping a wire, just kind of pick at it somewhat gingerly because that little wrapping string around it, around this core is not very tough. So we'll return in just a moment when I've actually got this loose. All right, as you can see, I've now successfully managed to get the winding off of the core of the string. It's very, very fragile, and if you're a little too tough with it, it will begin to crumble, so you have to be careful. Um, typically, you're going to be wrapping these, um, I guess it would be in a clockwise motion around the core of the string, and I do apologize for the dirty fingernails. I've been working a little bit today. I wasn't expecting to get a close-up done, but okay, you gotta be very, very careful, because if you're not careful, you can break the winding, and when that happens, uh, you're pretty much in big trouble trying to find the start of it again. But gradually over time you unwind this and unfortunately it is wound um, probably tens of thousands of times around this. And it's not very effective until it's over halfway wound for you to simply pull it off 
and allow it to unwind itself, it will lose its balance and not really work properly. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't really have the proper, I don't know what it would be, the looseness of it is just not there until much later in this process, um, at which point you can actually just pull it right off. And I'm not sure if I'll make it that far because this can take a substantial amount of time, but let's see how far we make it here. I can at least get one needle out of it. All right, as you can see, I actually had it backwards a moment ago. Whenever it's still short in such a fashion, every once in a while you can get nice long pulls here. It'll start to come unwound. As you can see, I did manage to get a little bit of a pull on it, but as it gets longer and gets a little bit of looseness on it, you can no longer do that or you risk breaking your string. But clearly the core is coming out. It will be able to be sharpened and it is a little bit firmer than a G-string. And also this is still pretty clean. The other one is a little bit rusty with blood and sweat and tears and all the stuff that comes with playing guitar. But um, as you can see, this is nice and clean, but it still will be sterilized before use on the inmate. Uh, let's see if I can get an actual length out of this. Once you've got an appropriate length, you clip it. And as I said, this part was also considered part of my job. And this right here happens to be an almost invisible, probably, uh, the wire that is wrapped around the wound guitar strings, the E, A, and D string on guitar. And this is completely worthless. We have nothing to do with this. I've got a trash can over here that will take care of that. Now this is your final product of making a tattoo needle out of a guitar string that's wound. As you can see, it's a bit of a painstaking process to kind of unwind it uh, slowly but surely, but this right here, again, will be laid out in a, an eraser, rolled until it is completely flat, and the tip will be placed on sandpaper, rolled around, and then uh, inevitably inserted thousands of times into an inmate's skin. So obviously not the longest video because there's not really too terribly many steps to it. It is a little bit painstaking and tedious to actually sit there and unwind it by hand as you get lower and lower, but luckily you get a nice boost every time you clip off the uh, length of string. You get to just kind of stretch it out a little bit again. Uh, I do also know how to make pick and poke tattoo needles. Uh, typically used a staple for that. And uh, that's, I did a lot of my tattoos. If you've seen my video uh, about all my prison tattoos, you'll know that I did most of them on myself. And I know how to make those as well, as well as prison tattooing. So. If this video gets 2,000 likes and you guys leave enough comments down below of something tasteful that you want me to do on my wife, she has agreed to allow me to do a pick and poke tattoo on her. I guess on the streets they call it stick and poke, but in prison, in the prisons that I went to, they call it pick and poke in there. That's what all of my tattoos are. I've done a lot of them on myself and other people, and my wife is willing to let me probably ruin a few inches of her skin. And uh, I'm the one that has to look at it for the rest of my life, so you guys be gentle. But it's a little bit of an outlandish goal, but also it's a little bit of an outlandish thing for us to do. So if you guys get us to 2,000 likes on this video, I will be making a video of me doing a pick and poke tattoo on my wife. And that should be very funny. So leave a comment down below about what you'd like to see. And uh, we'll hope to see you guys soon. Make sure you check out the Twitch, twitch.tv slash jpalalt. And uh, obviously we've been putting a lot of stuff on Patreon here lately and putting original songs up uh, and pictures of whenever I went to ZZ Top with my dad, uh, pictures of me in prison and an authentic calendar that I made whenever I was in there. All that good stuff is on the Patreon, so make sure you check it out. We got the Discord, all that. The link tree is right down below. My wife worked very hard on it, so make sure you go check it out. I love you guys, and we'll see you very, very soon. Have a beautiful week. RuneScape Felon out.